Well, hi there, and welcome to our Sunday hymn time. Well, actually, I haven't got a hymn for you this time around. Uh, in fact, um, I have a song that goes back to about 1999, recorded by Robin Mark on his Revival in Belfast CD. Oh, yeah, really Irish, Celtic song. Uh, in fact, it's got a couple of really neat Irish chords in it. Well, if I don't mess it up too much. <laughs> I really need like a penny whistle or something and some Irish instruments, but oh, I'll do my best anyway. Um, but uh, the song goes back quite a ways, but every now and again I think about it. It's a haunting kind of a song, not, not just the, the melody, but the words and the message. And it comes back to me every now and again. And uh, well, it's all in the title, When It's All Been Said and Done. And when it's all been said and done, what's going to matter when our time here on planet Earth is over? Well, I'll let you ponder that while I try and get through this song. All right, here we go. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth Did I live my life for you When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find purest gold in my reclaim making sinners in to saints I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth did I live my life for you? Lord, I'll live my life for you. When it's all been said and done, wow. And, and like I say, a lot of Irish instruments in that. The song could go on a lot more than I was able to manage there, but wanted to just share with you a couple words, first of all, from the New Testament. And there's a great story in Acts chapter 10, and it's really worth reading sometime. And if you haven't got a Bible, just Google Acts chapter 10. And I was thinking of it because, well, of what's been going on in our world recently. And uh, the story features uh, the great apostle Peter, right? The big fisherman. Well, Peter had some real prejudices. Hmm, oh yeah. And, and God had to take care of that. Uh, in fact, he kind of had to cure him of that uh, through, well, first of all, a vision. And then going into the home of a man that he would never have associated with in his whole life. I mean, totally different race, culture, everything was different. Peter would never have stooped to visit a man like this. But he says, I now realize how true it is that God, 
does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Now then Peter goes on to describe the message that God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Right? And it goes back to, back to the Christmas story, right? The shepherd's out in the field, and, and suddenly the angel appears and says, Behold, I bring you glad tidings, good news that shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Well, just like Linus told us, right? And, and Peter says that Jesus is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Forgiveness of sins. It's a, it's a gift we receive when we place our faith in Jesus. When we become one of his followers, we become a, a Christian. But I was thinking about these words and well, you know, looking at what's been going on in our world recently and not just not just recent history, but, well, no, actually, I shouldn't say that. You know, just the last three or four years, how much things have changed. Have you noticed? I'm sure you have. And, and uh, well, have you noticed, especially in Facebook posts and, well, people are more likely to rant. People can actually be a little rude. And these are people who are, you know, normally very nice Christian people can be very rude. I have known to be rather rude at times. And I get convicted about that because is that how Jesus wants us to live? I don't think so. In fact, if I go way back to the Old Testament, the prophet Micah, he says that he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. You know, I was thinking when it's all been said and done, and well, when you're when you're my age, it's 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 going to be done long before it's all been said. But hey, walking humbly, loving mercy, acting justly. When it's all been said and done, may that be said about all of us. God bless you on this Sunday, or well, whenever you're watching. <laughs>